Hey, welcome to my channel, Authentically Amber. I'm Amber, and today I wanna to show you how to make a rag quilt. So um, let me show you the supplies that you'll need, and um, then we'll get right into it. So here I have four different prints of flannel. Um, normally I would say select five different prints and you will need one yard each. Um, since I really couldn't find a fifth one when I was selecting these, I am going to use this uh, coral with the white polka dots twice. So I will use two yards of that one and then just a yard a piece of each of these. And um, then in the next step, I will show you how we're going to cut out eight inch squares of these. And I usually like to make it six across, squares across and eight down. And so what we're going to do once we cut out our eight inch squares, we are going to sandwich a piece of bind, uh, batting in between. And so we're gonna cut out, we're gonna make our batting squares um, a little bit um, short, smaller than the eight inch. So we're gonna just make these six inch. Um, and then we're going to sew an X across each square and that will keep the batting in place but you'll see as we go along so you will need um, just a low soft uh, loft batting um, nothing too thick um, and so like I said we're going to make sandwiches so you will need a self-healing mat this one I just got it's a Fiskars and this one is 24 inches by 36 so plenty of space to cut out some nice fabric and you will also need an acrylic ruler because that is what you will be and you'll need a rotary cutter this one's a Fiskars and so that's what you will be cutting against on the self-healing mat um, so in the next step I will show you where I've cut out the eight inch squares and uh, then we'll go from there Hey guys, uh, we're talking about how to make a rag quilt today. So uh, I will include a list of all the materials that you will need. And uh, let me just show you what we have so far here. So you will need five yards of flannel. Normally I choose uh, five different prints uh, to coordinate together. Um, in this case, I was only able to find four. so. I would normally, I normally do one yard per print, um, but in this case, the coral with the white polka dots, I am doing two yards, but a total of five yards. So any kind of print that you like, you can either even use just two prints, but as long as you have five yards total. Okay, so what we are going to do is to cut out eight inch squares of each uh, flannel print and we are going to cut out six inch batting squares. And um, as you will see, I have already sandwiched these together. So we're making a sandwich, right? So we're using this, I use the same print on both sides because with the rag quilt, <clears throat> excuse me, you are actually exposing the seams. So I have already pinned these together with the batting in between a low loft batting and we're doing the six inch batting um, in between the eight inch flannel pieces because we don't want, once we make our cuts around each edge, we don't want that batting to show through on the sides and then it just makes a mess. So um, we want those to be a little bit smaller than the eight inch squares. So I have everything pinned here. I've got all my sandwiches you will see here. And so the first step that we're going to do, and I've already done this one for you, is to make an X. We are just gonna use white thread. And what I recommend before you start any big project, make sure you have plenty of thread on your, bob your, um, your machine here and your bobbins loaded. I just finished kind of getting reacquainted with my machine because I really haven't been quilting for like two years. 
I missed it tremendously during my recovery, so I'm excited to get started again. But I just loaded three bobbins. That way you don't have to keep stopping once you get the momentum going. But what we're going to do is just sew an X. Why do we do that? Well, we do that so your batting does not become dislodged um, in the wash and in use. And then you just wind up with a rumpled mess and nobody wants that, right? <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna show you how we go ahead and do one X. I'm certainly not gonna do all of this on film, but as you see, um, you can pin any way you like. I generally pin on all four corners just so uh, I keep the batting in place until I'm ready to start sewing. So and you wanna start sewing just a little bit away from the very edge because we are gonna clip that anyway. So here we go. And we're just gonna sew corner to corner here. So I'll remove my other pin and continue sewing. going to clip it, turn it, and do the same thing, creating that X. ever made a rag quilt before comment below if you have this is one of my very favorite fun projects to do because it works up nice and quickly <laughs> so here you see we have another X so I'll put that in the completed pile and we're going to do the same thing for all 48 squares so I like to make it like an oversized throw so what I do is six squares across and four eight i mean i'm sorry an eight down <laughs> to make 48 squares total but we obviously would need four a uh, 96 rather 96 squares in total because we're making the sandwich the back side of it the same so um so a total of 96 squares um six squares across and eight down total of 48 so i'm going to continue making my x's and i'll meet you back here when i'm done Okay, so now that we have sewn the X's uh, in all of our squares, uh, you're going to lay them out in a pattern that makes sense to you, however you like them. Um, the key is to try not to let, you know, light patterns uh, be on top of each other because you want some variation. So I have already gone through and laid out all of my rows and I've pinned them together. And um, I also, you might see these numbers. Um, I, number, I like to number my rows because as I'm piecing together and starting to sew my rows together, um, sometimes they might get out of sync. And then you may run into a situation where say there's two coral, coral colors uh, right together. So we don't want that. So this just helps me to stay a little organized um, I just number my rows one through eight. Uh, like I said, I'll have eight rows and then six across. So these I have, like I said, already gone ahead and pinned together. So you want to pin, um, all, so the seams will be on the outside. Unlike traditional quilting, the seams on a rag quilt will be exposed. So we're not going to be sewing them and they're not going to be a finished look. They will be on the back side. But on the front side, we want that rag effect. So uh, I went ahead and I pinned, I just put two pins in here all the way across on all of my rows. So this is a whole row and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is row one and so on um, up to eight. And so now the next step will be actually sewing each uh, row together. And then once I have every row um, sewn, the squares sewn together, then I will begin piecing my rows together. And then you'll want to pin, so again, the seams will be on the outside. So we would pin here, and then we would go ahead and stitch across. 
Now you do want to make sure that your seams are going to line up nicely and you don't want this to be bunched up so much here. So what I like to do is I'll put one seam going this way and one seam going the, re the other way. So you see how this, the seams meet, but it will become flat and that won't matter in the long run because we're going to be snipping all of that anyway. So try to do all of your seams that way and that way they will all lay flat nicely. But the first step would be to go ahead and sew each row together and then we will begin building the quilt row upon row. And I'll be back to show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and sew our first row of the quilt that we have all pinned together. So we are ready to bring it over to the machine. And I will be doing a three quarter of an inch uh, seam on all of these and that should make it rag up really nicely. So uh, you'll notice I have all of these pinned together. So let's go ahead and take it to the machine. I will leave my number one uh, little tag on it just so I don't get my patterns out of order. So I'll go ahead and remove my pins. And this quilt is very forgiving. That's why it's an ideal beginner project um, because it just, you don't have to be perfect with this, which is awesome. All right, so I'm gonna line it up. I put a piece of masking tape with some marker here because uh, I wanna make sure I do stay within that three quarters of an inch uh, seam. So let's get sewing here. And I have a quilting foot on here just so it runs through uh, nice and smooth. All right. And see how that works up really quickly? And that's just your first one. Then we'll go on to the second block stitching. And I'll just run through this real quick to give you an idea of the first row and then uh, you'll know how to do it from there. So we'll just line up that seam again. We'll go through and snip all the loose threads later, but you see how we have the two blocks already stitched nicely together and you will see that you have the exposed seams, unlike a tra traditional quilt, um, you don't. But on this one, we want that because we want the rag effect. And then if we turn it on the back, you'll see that that is more like a traditional quilt with the seams all nice and neat, but that's not the purpose of this quilt. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and stitch our third block together here. And you just wanna hold it together so it stays nice and tight there. We just have two more blocks to stitch together and you can see how that's coming together nicely. So we will go ahead and do the same. Let me just show you what I have so far here. Let me zoom in so you can see. But um, then we have the rest of the quilt here that is all ready to go. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing that I just did for all eight rows. And then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now I have all eight rows stitched together, and now the next step is stitching each row upon row to finish up the quilt. Now, I wanna show you some close-up work here. I am beginning to pin each row upon row together. So what I have done here is I've gone ahead and I have row one 
and row two, you want them, uh, you know, face sides, right side out each one. So I want to show you about the seams because this is key to getting your seams to line up because you want on the top side, the rag side, that doesn't matter so much because that's going to get overlooked with the ragging effect. However, on the back side of it, you want your seams to line up nicely. So I want to show you how I pin it. I pin it a little further down so I can go ahead and uh, keep going with my uh, sewing machine when I stitch these together. But I like to nestle my uh, seams together. And if you will get these seams just right, it should line up nicely on the other side. So I've done that on each, where each block intersects. I've nestled them together. And um, that will just create a nice tight seam there. And so I will sew row one with row two, and then we'll go on and do the same thing. We'll attach uh, row three on and so on through row eight. And then I'll be back to show you how we do. And then uh, uh, lastly, uh, regarding stitching, I will do one uh, seam all the way around, one three quarter inch seam um, throughout. That's the, um, the seam that we're using, three quarters of an inch. Even when you connect each row together, we're using three quarters of an inch seam, so all of our seams will be uniform when we go to do our ragging effect. So once you have sewn all the rows together, then we're gonna just go and do one seam all the way around, and that just holds the quilt together nicely. And then once I'm finished sewing each row together, then I will go through and show you how we make the ragging effect, so. I'll catch you in a few minutes. Okay, so I have just finished sewing all these rows together. So you can see everything is nice and ready to be snipped. Um, I'm actually going to do the one stitch all the way around. I didn't do that yet, but I wanted to show you, um, you will need a pair of hinged snippers because using traditional scissors for this part will really hurt your hand after a while. So these are Fiskars and um, I've had them for probably since I first started quilting, so probably like nine years. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show you um, how we're gonna go about doing this. So obviously you want to be very careful not to snip your seam because then your rag quilt will fall apart. So um, we want to go in between um, this the seams here on the edge it doesn't matter that they're sewn together different directions all that's going to get snipped anyway so we're going to go ahead and snip close to that seam and then just really however you like to do it um i'm probably doing it a good a half an inch i guess apart um, all of this is going to rag up nicely i usually wash them twice and then I shake them out before putting them in the dryer because a lot of loose threads will come out and you will have a bunch in your machine. So you want to wash them once on just a quick um, gentle cycle and then go shake it out outside. And then I do it again. Um, I put it in the dryer and then wash and dry again. That will help you to get rid of all the loose frays. But you see how that is? And I just go through and snip, snip, snip each row and uh, until you're done. And then that is really all there is to it, this rag quilt. Um, and I'll show you the finished product, but um, it's super easy as you can see. I just used eight inch squares, uh, sewed an X in there to stabilize the sandwich, the um, batting that's in between low loft batting and for this quilt this is like a generous crib size quilt i would say um or a throw it doesn't have to be for a baby these colors are certainly suitable for a baby um but this could be for anybody um whatever colors you choose um but i chose one yard per um pattern so i would use five yards for this um, size quilt. So 
This is six squares across and eight down. Um, certainly you could make it smaller if you just wanted to do a small baby one. I like to do it this size because if I am giving this as a baby gift, um, it can be grow with that child until they're probably five years old. So they can use it for a long time. So that's the mom and me wanting to get maximum use out of something. So I'll show you the final product once I have everything snipped. And I hope you guys try this out. Let me know if you do. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, in the comments below and I'll see you when I'm done. Thanks.